Hello and welcome to episode one and indeed season one of Bottech TV, where over the next 12 weeks we're going to explore some of the fun and interesting aspects of boat technology and naval architecture. To kick off episode one, I wanted to touch on one of the most important parts of the boat and something which I built my career around, the propeller. There are a couple of naval architecture rules that come before the propeller, namely that the boat should float, and rule number two, it should float upright. But assuming these two conditions are met, the propeller takes over and gets you places. Now the propeller has been around since about 1830 and its development has closely mirrored that of the marine engine. As engines increased in size and power, transmitting even larger horsepower down the shaft, so the propeller had to adapt and absorb the loads. On the right you can see an early propeller from 1840, a large and slow spinning propeller. To the left, the new tech, potted propulsion, an azimuthing propeller state of the art right now. Most people know the propeller. Most people know propeller diameter, and this is how manufacturers categorise and price propellers. This is one of the first parameters any propeller shop will ask for, uh, but how about the propeller face? In the picture to the left, with the blue propeller, you can see the face of the propeller. That is, when standing at the stern of the boat, looking forward, the surface area of the propeller facing you is known as the propeller face. When the prop shaft enters the propeller at the back is known as the back. For naval architects, the face is also the pressure side uh, for the propeller and the back is the suction side, but I'm going to touch on more of that in the next episode. So why is this knowledge important to us? Well, when you size a propeller, you'd be asked for the propeller hand. It's determined when looking at the propeller face. So knowing the face is important for the hand. If the propeller rotates to the starboard, it's a right hand propeller. If the propeller rotates to port, it's a left hand. Remember, if you mess this up when you're ordering a propeller, your blades are going to run backwards, they're not going to work right, and you're going to be stuffed up. So it's really, really good to know. The next thing to consider is the pitch. Now the pitch is a bit of a difficult one to put across. Um, most people will know that you have 15 inch pitch or whatever on a, on a certain propeller. It doesn't actually refer to the angle, and this gets a bit confusing for a lot of people. If you look at most blades, uh, the pitch near the root is much higher, and uh, the pitch near the tip is much lower. And this is to do with, uh, it's called blade offloading, uh, and we'll cover this in a future episode. Um, so how do you set the pitch then? Well, the idea behind setting the pitch, if you can see from the screen there, is that it's it's basically assuming that in one diameter how far the propeller will move forward and a little bit of trigonometry so the tangent of the the uh, the diameter and then the advance forward gives you the pitch angle so it's it's pretty it's more of a theoretical more of a naval architecture definition but that's where it comes from um, and then this is quite a simplistic form on the screen uh, we have lots of definitions for pitch in naval architecture um, from this as you can see there, we can get the lift, we can get the drag, we can work the torque load out, the induced velocities. There's a whole range of parameters that can, can come from it. But most people would just know a propeller. Whoops, excuse me. We'll just see the propeller, and that's what they would think of would be a simple form of pitch. The next one, um, you may have seen this on military vessels. Um, if we've got the blades tipping this way for the pitch, if the blades bend this way, this would be the skew. And the idea behind the skew is that on every propeller at the top of the blade section, there's a slower moving flow of water. It's known as the wake, and it's a quite a complicated thing. Um, but as the blade goes through it, it's like going through turbulence every rotation. And for most vessels, the, the lumps and bumps that you would feel as it went around every rotation is not a problem. Um, for military and uh, research vessels, they want to be as quiet as possible. And the way you uh, reduce this effect is by bending the blade backwards so that as it enters the slow flow area, it has got reduces its shock load. And uh, this is called skew. And this is what you can see on here. It's just basically an, an offset of the blade. There's different forms of it. The top one there has got a little bit of skew. And the bottom one is, is very heavily skewed. And obviously, the more skew you put on it, the... Um, the more structural loads go on it. Say, for example, the bottom one, if you put that into a crash stop and spun it in reverse, you can imagine that the blades are going to be very floppy when they go in reverse as compared to the top one. So there is limits on how much you can do. And in general, most, <coughs> excuse me, most um, commercial propellers um, will, will have it. Most pleasure craft propellers probably wouldn't have it. Um, you can see here on Archprof here, she's got a little bit on it. So it's, 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 it's used on judgment. The next one 
is propeller rake. Now this is probably one of the hardest ones to see. Um, it's a very subtle effect on efficiency, so um, it's done for other reasons. Um, you see on the aperture at the bottom there, you can see the blades are slightly lifted back. And this is a very useful feature when you want to um, fit a propeller in an aperture, but you want to maintain the diameter. So to some extent, you can put a little bit of uh, rake on the blades and you can get a larger diameter in the same aperture. Um, it also helps with um, structures because it's bending the blades backwards. And in the olden days, or even now, when you do large castings, um, the blades being tipped up like this helps with the flow of gases that are trapped in the metal so that uh, things can move around. So again, it's a very useful tool, but probably not something you would notice on your um, standard propeller. Finally, uh, when we're sizing propellers, we do get asked a lot that um, our calculations and our predictions are different to other people's predictions. And why is this? Why would something like a, um, a very prop and a max prop and an auto prop have different um, pitch calculations? And a lot of the time, this is down to a couple of things here. <coughs> one I'm going to cover and one I'm not. Um, the ones here is blade sections. Now the blade sections do generate lift and it's it's very important part of um, the performance. Um, and I'm just showing you here that from 1840 up to what, 1930s, 1940s, you can see the difference in the blade shapes. Uh, when they first started, they were just twisted flat plates. Uh, all they were thinking of doing was like a paddle, just pushing it through the water. Um, as the engines got bigger and the loads got bigger, um, cavitation was discovered and these, all this noise and vibration and loss of performance uh, became an issue. So um, scientists and engineers started to look into different blade shapes to be able to put down the power. And this led to round back sections and then with the advent of aerodynamics and wind tunnels and aircraft and all that cross pollination that came with that, um, you start to get more airfoil type sections. And indeed, the modern sections now will be a combination of round back and uh, airfoil sections. They'll just be interchanged to give the best performance. So that's the, the blade sections which would also contribute to the lift. So not just the pitch, not just the diameter. The other one, which we I'm not going to cover here, we'll do in a later one, um, is the blade camber as well. So you can put a, a camber on the blade, kind of like when an aircraft comes into land. You'll hear the wings change shape so it can get a, it can uh, generate more lift at a slower speed so it can fly and come into land. Again, with a camber, we do that sort of thing as well. So just a very, very quick, brief overview of um, propeller parameters that we're going to be referring to in the next couple of weeks and hopefully in the next couple of series. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is the first one. Um, but thank you for watching. Uh, my name's Dr. Rod Sampson. I'm the Naval Architect with King Propulsion here in Virginia Beach. And we'll see you next week. Um, be sure to um, click on the links below. We have a subscribe button for the YouTube channel. We're pushing this out on a few different platforms. Um, we'll see how it goes. But thanks for watching and we'll see you around.